Angeles, California. It's Landed Late Night. Tonight's guest. And now, your host, Haley. Haley Ringo, tonight we have an amazing Irish recording artist who overcame stage three cancer and he has huge things in the works. Please welcome Keith Cullen! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah! See, our colors are on fire right now. Clash, clash. You're on fire. Clash, clash. Well, I said I'd get ready for Halloween prematurely. Perfect. Well, I like, that's my favorite holiday, so Perfect. I didn't get that memo, but this can be like a. Yours is very We're scaring people vibes. with the colors, so I feel like this is a good start to the episode. Maybe this episode will just be terrifying in every way possible. Well, I just feel you're killing it from a fashion perspective, so. Wow. Thank you for making the effort words. for me. Duh. I actually saved this outfit for you. Like, I was going through my outfits and I was like, which one is the most insane and like loud? Because I just. I felt like you would appreciate it. I'm sure you say that's all the boys. So you just released uh, your latest single last Friday. Piece of me. Piece of me, which yes. is so exciting. Um, it's Thank amazing. You. I want give us like a little, like just sing for me, baby. Like a rendition. Yeah, like a little rendition. You I don't love know that you me. I am stronger than you think. You don't know me. I am stronger than you think. You don't know me. Woo! There's like this big like horn section and you can get into it. And it's, oh, I will. It's and I have. <laughs> okay, so your single just dropped it. Let's go back to that before we get into to all the good good and the ju the juju. Um, the juju. I meant like zhuzh. Like when you zhuzh your hair. The juju. The ju the juju. The dude. The dude. I, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, that came kind of, out. It's fine. I say things. I make up words sometimes and like we just go with them. Gucci flip flops is one of them. That means like. This is great. Like this is good. Gucci flip flops were good because it came from that rap song okay. that I thought was the worst. But I don't well, I feel if you're wearing Gucci flip flops, life is good anyway. Right. Because exactly. if you can afford the real version <laughs> of them and not the the knockoff ones. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What well, was now, your question? A fashion yes. question for oh, you. Okay, if you I'm are ready. dealing Gucci flip flops, are you putting on a pair of socks? Um. I guess it would depend on like if I'm wearing sweatpants or Come on, if I'm... answer the question. Well, I don't... Five no. foot... Mm, perfect. <laughs> Me and you can no. be friends. Okay, but... oh god! I was like, what if I answer this wrong? And he like leaves... No, I'm kidding. No, I just I... don't get that whole trend at all. Well, it came from athletes. I think that's like where it started because my dad's a coach and I feel like all of his athletes wear flip-flops and socks. Like the socks with sandals look, which is like a horrendous thing and then they try to make it like cool. And then they're like, oh, it's athleisure, and actually it's just horrid. Um, but I will say, when you wear socks, you know, it keeps your feet from, like, sliding. But that's totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You know fashion, um, and they don't, so that's where we're at. Okay, so your single just launched. So my story was, I spent, like, nearly two, two years in the studio okay. writing this album that never came out. It's called Dear Future Me. Um, and that was before I got sick. Okay. And what was very interesting about it is there was lots of nods to uh, going home and um, all these weird messages that were getting channeled at the time that only makes sense now. Mm -hmm. um, but Peace of Me was one of the new tracks that I did after coming back. And it was specifically about um, being a better version of yourself and people not giving you enough credit for who you actually are, yeah. just in your own skin and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. Um, and specifically for me, I think the the goal of writing any song is for it to be universal, so you can listen to it and take it, right. take what you want from it. A lot of people listen to it and they're like, oh, that's about a relationship or someone who broke my heart or I'm stronger now without you. Um, for me specifically, it was to do with the medical profession and how they literally wanted to take out um, big chunks of my body and organs that I kind of need. Right. So. Um, Yes, people, keep all your organs intact. It's a good idea. Um, so that, like, that's what the song represents for me personally. But it's written in a way that I think it is universal, that people can listen to it. And, you know, we're always exposing different pieces of ourselves right. as we grow and we learn and uh, we evolve. Yeah, and we're learning about different parts of us as humans, like, as we get older, too, and things we... I mean, I even in the past, like, three years, 
you know, my perception of for things that I used to so strongly believe in have completely changed now. And that's a beautiful thing. That's life. It's like always yeah. a journey and people are always growing. So you've had, you know, a, a very difficult battle with stage three cancer and your health journey. How has that shaped you over the past couple of years? Uh, I think it changed everything. Um, I was always one of these people who I felt like I landed on my feet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that expression here, you land on your feet, which is like... Well, we love the word landed, so we obviously. use it in a lot of um, ways. You land on your feet. I never thought cancer was something that was in my story. So it wasn't, none of my family had ever encountered it before. I never lost anybody to it. I didn't really even have any people in my close circle. So um, when they told me them words, there was a lot of disbelief and I think I worked so hard in them previous three years to get my career to where it had needed to be right. and we had just charted in the billboard charts and we did all these incredible things um, and then they were like hey you're gonna have to stop all of this you're gonna have to put everything down and you need to focus on staying alive yeah um, how did you find out you had cancer so it was funny so I can't I I subconsciously knew that there was something going on in my body. So okay. I knew that year um, because I was tired and I'm never normally tired. Okay. I'm normally like, let's go, let's hit it. Um, and I had said to um, the, my management team that I needed some time off at Christmas. Yeah. We went home in October and we released an EP called Iron Clouds and I was on TV in Ireland and all of that stuff. And from that there was a call to say, hey, do you want to come to Australia and start the promo there? And I was like, oh, well, we can't miss this opportunity. Right. So I landed in Sydney and had this big bleed, um, and none of the team were there at the time. So it was just me, and I was like going into the doctors, and I was freaking out. I was like, what's going on? I thought something might have, you know... Um, ruptured. Ruptured on the plane or oh that gosh. type of thing. Um, and then fast forward, two weeks later, they're like it's bladder cancer, there's a tumor there, it's stage three, and I had to be operated on in Australia before they flew me back to Ireland. Um, because it was that, fa like, that fast spreading? Yeah, and it's, it w well, obviously I was bleeding, and, yeah, and I mean, they had to get the tumor out, but I think in my mind it was a, it was a big deal, because they were like, you know, this is going to take a, a period of time you know we need to do chemotherapy and we need to do resections and you'll have to have operations and in my mind I think we become so obsessed with the outcome of our careers and you know the music industry is very uh, transient you know people are in people are out and yeah. I just I felt at that time that was my time to shine mm -hmm. and then they were like actually no so you got to stop right now and got to concentrate on health. So there was definitely a mental struggle in my head because I didn't feel yeah. anything either. So I was bleeding, but I wasn't in pain. So it's not as if I was like, I felt sick. Right. Um, it wasn't until chemotherapy came around where I was like, oh, so this is what sickness actually feels like. Um, so I didn't want to stop. Right. So I was like, hey, let's do the radio tour. And everyone was like, keep, you know, I'm gonna get in touch with reality here. You're technically dying right now. You're like, now. I'm fine, everything's I'm fine. fine. I'm fine, We're I'm good. good. What time do you have to be at the next interview? Oh my gosh. Um, so, yeah, but I think that's just the disbelief. And yeah. I think when somebody, when someone challenges you like that, um, especially when it comes to your mortality, um, yeah. sometimes the mind just shuts down and it doesn't actually wanna listen and it's just, naive to the fact of what's actually going on so I felt uh, I felt very disconnected in that moment to yeah. the actual reality and the situation that was going on well and because it's your I mean your whole like that's your career had been coming to a head and your whole identity in a sense is like in that is in your music and then that's just completely like you know taken from you that's really hard. Like, how has that changed your perception of your career? Do you feel like it's altered how you view yourself in your career and like what you want to accomplish in this lifetime? Yeah, I think I didn't, I didn't die. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Here you are looking beautiful as ever in your loud orange sweater that I love. That was not, that was not, what did you call it? 
Subtle shade. Subtle that was shade. that was not subtle shade. Loud is a um, good word in my vocabulary. <laughs> but I think I didn't. The point I was trying to make was I didn't die, but the old key died in them in that moment, and you become you become very different coming back. Like I don't have the chokehold that I used to have on my career. Um, I think, you know, if you're if you're in it that much where you're willing to sacrifice your health for the sake of your career, you're crazy. Yeah. Like you're literally crazy. And I think I was out of my mind and I think mm -hmm. being in LA for a period of time, you you can get like that, yeah. you know, where your career is the number one. My career is super important to me, probably, right. you know, equally as important as everything else in my life. Um, but I don't have the chokehold that I had on it. And then entering back into the world, everything's different. So how you relate to people, yeah. um, your gratitude. Like, I, there was times where I just couldn't even walk. Like, yeah. I was so weak and, like, I spent most of my time in the bathroom, you know, very sick. Mm -hmm. So it was like, when you, when you wake up in the morning and your legs work, yeah. like, I was all about the spirituality and, oh, let's be grateful and I'm grateful for this. But it takes you to a different level of gratitude when yeah. your body that we take for granted all day, every day, that it just walks us into the interview and yeah. our voice just naturally comes out and our eyes work and, you know. That's, yeah, I mean, that, those are little, like, little things that we don't even, I don't even think about every day and it's like getting up every morning and thinking about, oh, like, I have a place to sleep today. I have, I'm able to you know, see, I'm able to breathe, I'm able to walk, and I feel like, yeah, that would completely change your perception of what's important and what, you know, yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean, and, and I don't know if we, if we have a right in life anymore. I think, like, we're, we tend to only celebrate certain things, but I think, like, every day that you wake up and you're able to breathe is technically a better day than yeah, if you're so not, true. right? So, yeah. like, when I was super sick, and there was a question mark around my future, you're not worried about your Spotify streams. Right. You're not worried. You're not even worried about the money that's in your bank account. You're not worried about the house you live in. You're not worried about your Instagram likes or your comments. <laughs> like, you're just not. Yeah. You're just not. You're, you're fighting for something that's way bigger than you. And I think coming back this time with Make Way as a single or Piece of Me, they're the most honest and real I've ever been in my writing. And it just seems to be resonating on a whole different level. Yeah. I know too, you're quite the entrepreneur and you have, um, you started Stereo. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We have an app that goes into Uber and Lyft um, and the driver gets paid to play new and emerging music to their rideshare audience. So now it's become radio for rideshare where, you know, you jump into an Uber, go into your destination, and you'll hear Keith Cohen's music or, you know, but it will be playlisted alongside a, a big artist that's yeah. signed. Well, and also there's so many ways to now, like, to make money, to be seen, to get on different platforms. Like, you just have to be creative. So I love how you, you know, you turned your frustration into creating this company that's, like, beneficial for you, other artists like yourself, um, and and gonna promote and bring up those around you, which is really cool. Yeah, and it's a real community thing as yeah. well. With anyone who's signed up to Stereo, like, um, I got to host, um, you know, songwriting camps at Capitol Records with, you know, 20 of the artists. Oh, that's amazing. We get to do festivals. We do Stereo Live sessions at the Hotel Roosevelt. and. Um, Please invite me to the next one because that absolutely. is my favorite hotel. In that dress, I, I think you'll be hosting. Okay, um, perfect. <laughs> And I think I would love that. it's it's just we champion the underdog, right? And it's yeah. like I I've had to fight really hard to to get to where I am and I have, you know, a lot of great people in my life and I've had resources and I've had training and I've had experience in business. You know, just your average artist out there who's just starting out, who just has a dream in their bedroom, you know, they need all the help that they can get. And right. if I can help in some way, I always will. And I yeah. think our world is just a bit weird at the moment. Like people like to keep everything so close out of yeah. fear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, if I give you my contact, well then it's not going to be my contact with that whole thing around possession. It's just weird. To it me. is. When you bring up those around you, 
you get brought up too. Like it's just this creating this encouraging environment, uplifting, loving environment. And you know, when others succeed, you succeed. So like, yeah. I love, that's a really good point. I love what you just said about that. And also just, you know, I think this whole interview, it's been, your heart has shown a lot. And I think, you know, what you've, what you've gone through, what you've created, um, which so many things, you're such an entrepreneur. I mean, you also have a, a merch line, which is more like a fashion line in my opinion. Um, and you know, you give, um, it's with that that you give 10% back to mental health, correct? Yes. You're just helping people on so many avenues and so many platforms, and it's really cool to see that. Specifically with mental health, why is that so important to you? Um. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we all like we all are dealing with our own battles and our own struggles. So I, I would love to hear like your. Yeah, I think it. it's uh, it's become so prevalent in our society. You know, I think the world has sped up so much. Um, with great advances in technology and you know everything feels instantaneous now um, and we only show a piece of a piece of me you yeah. know every time you put out a post or every time you say something socially people create a perception of who you are yeah and I think a lot of the time then you're chasing that perception as opposed to you know uncovering who you are as an actual mm. individual so we give a certain side to ourselves, to the world, yeah. and then we spend all our time trying to keep up with who that actually is. Yeah. And I think that creates a lot of mm -hmm. mental instability for me personally, because sometimes, and, and then there's other days where I just wake up and I, I don't feel myself, you know, where no matter what's going on, um, you're having an off day yeah. and that's okay too. But I think it's it's important it's important for me that if I do something that's commercial, that it's attached to something of goodness. Yeah. So I'm all for profit. Like it's not as if like I want to do all of these things and give everything away right. because I think you need to, especially in LA, you need to eat. You need right. to. Well, you can do both. You can yeah. You can like bring people up, give back to the world, and also make money. Yeah. Like it's, and and it's like and people are afraid to say that it's yeah. like that's how the world works. Right. Um. But the reason specifically, it's a mental health charity is because when I met Danielle from Past, Present, Future, who I'm doing this collaboration with. You know she's had her own story which every single person has mm -hmm. like if you spend enough time with people and you listen everyone has their own story they have their own battle scars they have their own piece of them who they yeah. you know keep inside and they don't you know reveal to every single person on Instagram um, and that's why it was just important that if this line is to do well that they benefit from it yeah um, okay, so tell me before you came on set, we were talking a little bit about your merch line, like what the th what your sweatshirts will say. So tell me, give me a little sample. So there, <laughs> I already love them. I'm so excited to rep it. I'm there's like, definitely the spiritual side of me, and then there's the business side. But there's also a very sassy, you know, fun side to me too. We love sass. I love sass. We love sass. Um, and a lot of the time, like in the spiritual world you know, when shit outside of yourself happens, it's like, you have to look inside and you have to figure out, well, why did this happen to me? Right. And there's just some times where it's just not you. Right. Like, it's just like, it's just the asshole on the other side. Um, and the, the merch line says, it's not me, it's <laughs> you in bold writing. Um, and I think it's, I think it's just fun and it's a nod to, yeah. sometimes you just can't take yourself too serious either and yeah. I think there's a lot of people who get into the spiritual world and self-reflection and consciousness and all of that good stuff but sometimes you're just if someone's rude they're just rude it's yeah. just how you react to it so I'm just yeah. gonna wear that pretty much most days one of my friends had on this sweatshirt that said it's okay period and I was like wow that's so freeing. Like, <laughs> it's not great. It's not awful. But it's okay. And then on the other side, there's a beautiful, just a, a nice plain t-shirt. And it just says empowered with a red full stop. Yeah. And I think that speaks volume as well. Because to even just give yourself permission right. um, to just be yourself and be empowered from the moment you wake up and you put that t-shirt on, for me, is, is what life's about. Yeah, I love that. And I love just hearing your heart and your perception because like you've gone through 
a horrible experience and, and survived it and and it's given you this new look outlook on life, one that's like there's just take the pressure off, you know? And it's so like a short amount of time that we're on earth. Um and We so, say in Ireland pressure is for tires. <laughs> I love that. Right, I wanna practice an Irish accent. Can you just like can we just say some words that are like well, the typical the, what I get thrown on me a lot is like trone. top of the morning to you. Thrown, you just said thrown at me. Thrown. But I can't Irish. do the Irish. no. I can't do an Irish accent. Irish. How do you say Irish? Irish. 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 I'm Irish. I'm With Irish. A British accent. Yeah. We well, now it's going to be British one again. I'm Irish. Into the Australian. And now it's back here, is it? <laughs> oh, God. When you walked in, I was like, oh my god, I forgot you have an accent. I just like want to, I like feel like I keep getting closer to you because I'm like, I'm trying to just hear your voice and imitate what you're saying. Um, I'm one of them people where I, lo I love to talk to people, but you know the days where you have where you're like, I have my earphones in and my book yeah, is up? Yeah. Um, the minute people even hear like a, a a glimpse of the Irish. They're like, where are you from? Where yeah. are you from? Where are you from? Oh, I'm Irish. I'm like, how Irish are you? They're like, I'm 123rd Irish. Oh my god. I'm like, oh. They're like, one time I touched an Irish person, so like, now I'm Irish. Well, it's the Irish the like to get around, so. Oh, well, hey. There's a couple of us in the world. There's a couple of us in the world. <sighs> I didn't do that one well either. There's a couple of us in the world. That's better. Thank you. There's a couple of us in the There's world. There's a couple of us in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you are amazing. Um, I am so excited to well, one that I got to meet you, and then also just to see your journey um, and your you know back in biz, baby. Back in and business. your singles dropped, baby, and it's lit. It's live. Um, you guys have to go check out "Piece of Me" by Keith Cullen, um, and make sure to well, how I want them to follow you on all the things. So Instagram, Spotify, it's all Keith iTunes, Cullen, social security card. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's spelled like how it sounds. Keith yeah. Cullen. C U L L E N. Yes. Not Collins, because everyone no, in America is like Keith Collins. No. I'm like, no. Cullen. Cullen. Like, where's the vampire? That's Edward. Different. Cullen. Yeah. I knew it. My like, middle name's Edward too. Oh my God! Are you a vampire too? I believe in those, so you never know. You are Irish. You have to wait till you're Oh my god. <laughs> Woo, spooky Halloween, baby. This is still, we're still, now full circle. Back still to Halloween shit. Circle. This is where we're at. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you for I've having me. It's been having incredible. Yeah. Cheers, to, cheers to that, cheers baby. Cheers to that. Okay, make sure to subscribe to Linda Late Night. Every Wednesday night, I'll have a new episode, 8 p.m. And yeah, we're out. We're out. We're out. Woo, cheers. Cheers. Yay.